Hey, Accelerate, what's up? So this week we want to bring you something a little bit different. Uh, it's been brought to my attention that all over YouTube they do these things called uh, makeup tutorials or makeup voiceovers. And so it just so happens that I know a teenager named Blake that does her makeup and she's really good at it. And so I asked her to make me a video and I'm going to voice over. But here's the thing. I know nothing about makeup. I know that Pastor Courtney wears makeup, um, so this should be interesting. Um, Blake knows that most likely uh, I'm going to make her look silly, so, but let's see how this goes. All right, Blake, uh, apparently she's got to get everything together. Um, I assume she would be more prepared than this, but who knows. Um, so let's see. First one is oh, clear proof. Yeah, apparently you got to make your face clear. Uh, I have no clue what Clear Proof does. Well, you rub it all over your face, your eyes, your nose. Uh, and then we've got some like, I have no clue what that is. Mary Kay and some dot, dot, big old egg thing. It's a pink egg. Oh, you put it like tribal paint all over your face. What is she doing? Oh, she's smearing it in. So she's got a dab, dab here, a dab, dab. Did she do it on her ear? Her hair covers her ear. Whatever. Okay, so dab dab on your nose, dab dab on your cheek. Uh, this apparently is supposed to... Oh, she's doing it in her ear again. So apparently this makes your skin tone a little bit better. I'm not positive. Uh, then we've got some... I have no clue. Some... I'll call it foundation. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a fancy brush. We're going to rub foundation all the way down under the neck, the cheeks. Make sure you make good swooping motions. If you don't swoop it, you're not going to look pretty. So swoop, swoop. Brush it like you're painting a house. All right, brush your nose, brush your eyes. I'm pretty sure I was taught to only brush your teeth, but who knows. Uh, these look empty, but she's going to use it anyway. Oh, elf. She's got an elf brush. So we're going to rub the elf brush with the empty things of makeup and we're going to rub it on our cheeks. I'm This probably is contouring. I don't know what this does, but I've heard the word contouring with makeup. She just did it on her chin to make her chin look more prominent. I don't know what color. Uh, did it on her chin again. Now we got plums. This is made by destroying and squeezing plums and drying it out. We're using a paintbrush now. She's going to use the dark one because, uh, oh, now it looks like she's got a black eye. Blake, that's not a good look. You should def. looks like you have a black eye. I don't know if she understands that that's a black eye. She's going to blacken both eyes so it looks good. Uh... That may not be her color, to be completely honest. Colors are a thing with makeup from what I understand. She's got to make sure it's painted properly. Oh, use the fancy brush again. Didn't she already use the fancy brush? Ooh, eyeshadow. That'll make your eyes have good shadows and make it where you can't see as many shadows. She's picking the lighter color. Ooh, take away some of that uh, dark eye. Um, so no longer does she have just a black eye. Now she's got a black eye with coloring on top. Pretty sure this is what happens when you get hit in the face with a baseball and you have to cover it up. I don't know. Her eyes are really dark. She's really liking it though. Look at her. She, look at her face. How concentrated she is. She's looking. She's going to make sure it looks good. Oh, in the mirror. Oh, she gave you a small like smirk smile. That's nice. Uh, that says something lash. So I'm guessing it goes on her eyelashes. Does it darken it? What does it do? It's like it's pulling the eye up. Yep. Pulling the eye up. Pulling the eye up. Pulling the eye up. That makes no sense. 
Oh, now she's pulling the eyes down. Look up to the ceiling because that'll make sure you get your makeup done right. If you're not looking, you didn't do the bottom on the other one. Ooh, lasting fix. That'll fix your face. Time, that did not hit your face at all. She sprayed that in there and ruined everything. Something, I saw glitter something. Oh, it's glitter for your lips. So your lips look glittery. She's, oh, she had an elf brush earlier. Maybe these are the tears of the elf. That she kills little elves, make them brushes, and uses their tears to put on her lips. What's up, Accelerate? Welcome to another Accelerate Online where we get to hang out with you guys and, and talk about some really cool stuff. I'm excited for this week for the simplicity of it's my favorite Bible story. Uh, in fact, this whole series yeah. is about uh, my favorite Bible character. And so, and I absolutely... It's got a little man crush. Uh, it's a bromance. <laughs> Let's not make it awkward. Uh, I respect him. Um, no, realistically, if I could be anybody from the Bible, I would pick David. Mm -hmm. um, David is absolutely phenomenal on the fact that he is constantly uh, being faithful to God even when times don't make sense. Right. And he's utterly real. Like, there are times that he's like, God, all this stinks. Yeah. I don't want to be doing it, but you know what? I'm going to trust and I'm going to rely on you no matter what. He was always transparent with God, no matter what struggle he was going through or what season. Yeah, so uh, let's kick this off with the first part of uh, the, the story that we want to dive into into David's life. So David, as some of you guys know, was, was the king of Israel. But before he was the king of Israel, he honestly was just a shepherd. Uh, in fact, not only was he just a shepherd, but he was the youngest of his brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, his father kind of threw him by the wayside, almost forgot about him. Um, in fact, when the prophet came to anoint him to be the next king, uh, the dad didn't call him to be a part of the whole thing uh, to a point that the prophet uh, basically got through all the sons and said, yeah, this isn't it, but God told me the next king was in your family. Do you have anybody else? And the dad was like, oh, yeah, 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 I do. He's my youngest, right. he's kind of ruddish, and uh, just, you know, he's just a shepherd. Uh, and Samuel told Jesse to call him, get him up here. Right. And that's when he gets anointed to be king, uh, only to be pushed back into <laughs> being a shepherd. But uh, he gets anointed to be king, but there was already a king at that time. Right. And so he basically is like, hey... You're going to be king, but not yet. Go back and be a shepherd. Right. I know I know personally, if that were me, if you were walk, to walk up to me and be like, hey, Willie, uh, boats are in. You are to be the next president of the United States. Um, but for right now, until that happens, I need you to go back and work at Lowe's. <laughs> I would probably tell you to get out of here. Like, listen, not going to happen. Uh, as you know, I'm president to be. Like <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, honor me, respect me, whatever. Right. But I'm not going back to Lowe's. But David did not do that. David uh, honored his father. He honored the the prophet and and man, he trusted that God knew what was best in his life in that moment. And so yeah. David goes back to be this. The shepherd. Now he gets to do some some stuff, but realistically, uh, he then kind of becomes a servant to his his brothers and right. and his father. So, so David really had to focus on the fact that God had, even though God had big plans for him, he still had things that God wanted to work through in David's heart until that time came. And so David had to keep in his mind that starting small was harder than finishing big. Yeah. Even though he knew that God had called him to be king and that was something that he was destined to do, 
there were still things that he was going to have to do in this season of being home. And so in this particular story, it starts out, and he's basically food boy. Like, his dad's asking him, hey, your brothers are out doing important work. They're in the army. They're defending our nation. They're working for the king, and I need you to take them some food out. So he was basically like Uber Eats. Yeah. Like, he was running food out to them. And he could have got that, like, mm, I'm too good for this. Don't you know that I'm going to be the king later? But he didn't do that. Like, David was humble with this small beginning. He was still had a servant heart even during this season. Um, I mean, that would be so hard. It for would me. be hard. To, to Especially know. being the baby of 12 brothers. Because you yeah. know his brothers weren't always nice to him. And I, I would, um, I couldn't <laughs> even imagine um, the, the frustration that would overcome me. Uh, but David, man, he understood the small beginning. In right. fact, uh, I think it's easy though, like when I think about like going on vacations as a kid, when we would go, like we went to Virginia one time, longest car ride ever. And... It's easy for kids. What do they always say in the car? Are we there oh, yeah. yet? Willie says that every time we go anywhere. To the Yosho. Or are we there yet? Because they're wanting that end destination. And David could have been like that. He could have been like, are we there yet, God? Because I, I really don't like this process of getting there. But he wasn't. David was settled in knowing that whatever God's doing in this time, it's important. Yeah. Um, in fact, in uh, Zechariah... I love the fact, uh, Zechariah 4.10, it says this, Do not despise the small beginnings, yeah. for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Man, David had a chance to be so frustrated at the fact that he went to back to being a shepherd and he became Uber Eats for his brothers. Um, but he knew because of his time that he spent as a shepherd. In right. fact, the Bible says that while he was a shepherd, there were so many times that like, he was in the field as a shepherd that, that he chose in that time to worship God, to write songs, right. to write poems to God. Now, I love the fact that when you read this, you realize that David didn't have the Bible per se right. <laughs> in his hands where he could be there and do the 15 minute challenge praying for five minutes reading his bible for five minutes worship for five minutes no he legitimately spent that time that small beginning right to worship god in the way he knew how which was writing music writing poems right. writing uh just stuff down and and god used that small small beginning to create a time that when he was called to do the great things or finish big, right? that he was ready to do that. But he couldn't get to that point without doing the small things. Right. So at this point, David is, is called up to feed his brothers. And so he's on his way there. What, what goes on next? And so once he gets out there, he hears them talking about this giant that basically keeps mocking God, keeps mocking God's people. And David had a special relationship with God, and he pretty much didn't realize or understand why everybody didn't want to have that kind of relationship with God. Because instead of taking that on and saying, you know what, you're not going to mock my God. Yeah. Um, they were all kind of cowering down, like, I am not fighting that dude. Like, he can make fun of God, I'm not fighting him. And they were all kind of cowered down to him, and it kind of blew David's mind. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, why are you letting him say the things that he, whatever he wants to say about God? Like, God is faithful, God is good, God can do anything. And so when he kept challenging back and forth, David knew that if he stepped up and he defended God, then God would not let him fail. Man, but he would have never gotten there. And I and I love, we, we read something and we wanted to put it in here. And it's this, don't miss out on God's best because you're too good to do the small things. Right. God's best was for David to be right there, knowing that there was, there was a giant mm -hmm. talking bad about his God. But if he would have said, oh, serving my brothers... Honoring my dad is too little for me right. because I'm the next king. 
He would have never been in a place where he could do what God has planned for him. Right. The best thing that God has planned for him. So point two is this. Simple obedience and faithfulness unlocks God's promise in your life. Um, so that's really long, so let me break it down. <laughs> obedience and faithfulness unlocks what God has planned for you. That promise that God has for you. Um, but at, at this point, if we refuse to have obedience yeah. and faithfulness in the small things, if, if David would have never taken the time as, as a shepherd to worship God uh, and stay faithful during, during his time as a shepherd, or if, if David would have never taken the time to obey his father right. uh, and to serve his brothers, he would have never been positioned right where God wanted him to be uh, to unlock the promises that God had, had in store for him. And, and that promise was to be the king. Uh, and, and that's what God's promise for David was. Right. Um, but if he would have not went there, then his brothers, the whole army would still right. be afraid of a giant that's been in that place. Well, and this type of obedience was kind of unique. Like it was a, like a blind obedience. Yeah. Sometimes we have to follow God with a blind obedience and realize that we're not always going to understand it. It's not always going to make sense what God's asking us to do, but we have to have obedience enough to say, God, I don't understand it, but you know what? If you don't take the first step, you won't be able to take the final step. Yeah. And those big things that God's calling you to do, if you don't take the first step, you never get to do them. If David wouldn't have taken the first step, he wouldn't have got to take the final step. Correct. So point three that we want to talk about is you were made to walk over mm -hmm. your giants. You were made to conquer the things that, that make you worry, that make you fearful, that make you scratch your head. I, the things that stand in the way of God's promises, you were made to walk over that and conquer that. Right. God did not call you to live in a spirit of fear. He didn't call you to be depressed. He didn't call you to be anxious. He didn't call you to be sad. Okay? God called you to do and to be great. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so you were made to conquer the giants in your life. Whether that's depression that you're battling right now, being isolated at home. Yeah. Okay? Whether that's anxiety, worrying about what next year is going to look like. Whatever battle you're going through, God knows what it is. He's one step ahead of you, and you have to trust him during that process, during that fight, to realize that you were not called to be conquered. You are more than a conqueror when Christ is in you, and you are walking faithfully in blind obedience, doing what God's called you to do. And because, because David started with the simple thing, which was worshiping and putting God first. Right. And making God a In a time of isolation. Correct. When he was out, when nobody was watching, when he was out by himself, spending time with God. Even after he knew he was destined to be king. Right. Like, he already knew the big things that God uh -huh. had planned for him. But he still was put in a place of isolation and quarantine to be in a place where he could quiet himself. Right. Make God his focus. And then when he's called to do the great things, like... like confronting a giant that's in his way. The fear that, that he could have had could have been overwhelming. But because he was put in a place of, of, of isolation where he had to take care of sheep, man, God was preparing him in that moment by sending a, a bear his way that David conquered, by sending a lion uh, his way that David conquered. Man, David was put exactly where he was made to be to walk over the giant that was cursing his God. Now, you may have giants in your life. Like, trust me, I, I understand giants. Uh, I understand fears. I understand those things. And I know that, that we get them in our life. And, and you may be having that giant in your life, whatever it may be. And you're saying, I can't overcome this. Well, guess what? That's the devil talking to you saying, you're right. not worth it. But God's saying, no, I have destined you to walk over this this giant and conquer this giant, but I haven't destined you to do it alone. Right. I've destined you to do it by my side. With my help, you can defeat a giant 
that's in your life. David, if he would have never taken the time to worship God and put God as a priority in the quiet time, he would have never been able to face a giant with confidence knowing that it's not David that's going to destroy it, but it's the God right, that, that he himself. serves. Yes. So maybe that's you right now and you say, I've got giants in my life and I don't understand how to conquer them. The only way to conquer them is to put God number yeah. one in your life. And, and maybe you're saying right now, I've never put God number one in my life. Well, today is your day. Well, we're going to pray a prayer of salvation I, and I want you to pray it with me. If you are ready to put God number one and quit serving yourself and thinking that you can do this and defeat your giant by yourself, yeah. but you you're, can't. Yeah, then, <laughs> you can't do it alone. But if you're ready to say, God, I need you and I'm ready to serve you. Yeah. And if you're ready to do that, I want you to bow your head, close your eyes, eat this prayer after me. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've sinned. But you died on a cross for me. But you died on a cross for me. I accept. I accept. The invitation. The invitation. To live for you. To live for you. Thank you for making me new. Thank you for making me new. God, help me to be obedient. God, help me to be obedient. And to be faithful to you. And to be faithful to I you. I love you. I love you. In your name. In your name. Amen. Amen. So if you made that decision today, it's the best decision best that you will decision. ever make and we want to celebrate with you so comment below send us a direct message or call the church we would love to send you a first time gift um to help you in this new journey Absolutely. in this new season Absolutely. don't forget to dm us message us write us in the comments whatever you want to do let us know that you've accepted god as your number one in your life now real quick two reminders that i, I have to tell you first is Make sure you're participating in the Top That Challenge this right. week as a chance to earn a, a pizza delivered by Pastor Courtney and I. Uh, also, don't forget, Zoom tomorrow at 8 o'clock and another chance to win a pizza. We want to hang out with you. We yeah. want to play a couple games with you. We want to talk about today's message. Uh, so make sure that you're on Zoom at 8 o'clock. We'll make sure to get the Zoom uh, links out. Um, we'll also put a post on Facebook that if you want that link, send uh, us a message. We'll, we'll send, send it to you. Absolutely. Your small group leaders will all have it. So absolutely. Let's pray real quick before we head out. Jesus, we thank you so much for this time together. God, we thank you that you have called us to walk over those giants in our life. God, we know that you will not call us to do something and then let us fail. God, we put our trust and our hope in you. In your name, Amen. Amen. We'll see you later, guys. See you guys next week.